Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau from Compassionate Cooks, which I founded to empower people to make informed food choices and to debunk myths about vegetarianism and animal rights. You can learn more about who we are and what we do by visiting our website, compassionatecooks.com. I've been an animal activist and a vegetarian activist for over 15 years now, long enough to have heard every excuse in the book regarding eating meat. There seem to be as many excuses for eating animals as there are animals killed for such a purpose. And if you don't know what that number is, I'll tell you, it's 10 billion land animals in the U.S. alone every year killed for human consumption. 10 billion. I don't know if that number surprises you, but it's a number so daunting to me that I can't quite wrap my brain around it. And that's just in the U.S. Worldwide, it's about 45 billion. And these numbers continue to grow steadily as the human population grows and as our addiction to meat grows. If we included sea animals, the numbers are remarkably higher. I've heard different totals, some of which may or may not include the bycatch, the sea turtles, the seals, the dolphins, the sharks, and many other untargeted sea animals who are unfortunate enough to be caught in the nets along with the unfortunate targeted sea animals. And I say I've heard excuses for eating meat because that's what they are, given the fact that I've yet to hear a convincing reason. I don't think people really give much thought to the justifications they create, or really I don't think they've been challenged when they say sometimes silly things. Things like, you know, if we didn't kill and eat the animals, the world would be overrun with them. Like we have this fear of cows just taking over our streets and our schools. I mean, you know, um, or, you know, these incisors in my mouth prove that we're meant to eat animals. And I do address these questions and will continue to address these questions, some popular ones, some more colorful excuses. But for now, I want to focus on one that sounds fair enough on the surface, but which falls apart, in my opinion, upon closer examination. It goes something like this. Eating meat is my personal preference. And since I respect your desire not to eat animals, I would appreciate your respecting my preference to dine on them. So that personal preference argument is, is one that some people give. The problem I have with this justification is that it assumes there's no victim, no other. It implies that the meat eater's desires or traditions or culture or taste buds are superior to anything or anyone else. And that because of this, he or she is absolved from the harm eating meat causes. And for me, that just doesn't hold water. As a society, we collectively decide that certain behaviors, certain actions, certain personal preferences are inappropriate appropriate or morally reprehensible, particularly when they cause injury or harm to another. Think about what abusive parents or spouses say when they're accused of child or spousal abuse. They often protest that it's nobody else's business how they treat their child or their wife or husband, whoever the victim is, that people shouldn't meddle into their affairs and that they can do whatever they like in their own home. And though there was a time when the law protected such people and behavior. This isn't the case any longer. We've created laws to make domestic abuse illegal and punishable. Many people are making more conscious choices when it comes to what they buy, choosing products that don't contribute to child labor or slave labor, not buying products with lots of packaging so we don't create unnecessary waste, or products that aren't toxic. People are making sure they buy products that are less toxic in their home for their families or even for their companion animals, um, or products that don't exploit farmers. There's just a consciousness around consumerism these days, and we'll hope that that continues to grow. So my question is, how then can we possibly ignore the animals whose miserable lives have been so violently cut short because we hold on to a particular taste preference or habit? The animals whose bodies we've locked up and used up and cut up for our enjoyment are no different than the victims of domestic abuse who, if they had a choice, if they had a voice, would choose not to be tormented or killed. When we take away the choice of another and then use that as a license to hurt or kill, we're participating in an egregious act of cruelty. Whether we do it ourselves or whether we pay others to do it for us, we only tell ourselves that our personal choice is our own business, our own preference, so we can sleep soundly at night. That's really what it comes down to. 
A choice made from personal preference might be the color I paint my bathroom or the kind of car I buy or the way I style my hair. But a personal choice to hurt someone else, I don't know. That doesn't look like a very pleasant credo to live by, in my opinion. But because millions of people do live by it, billions of animals unnecessarily die by it year in and year out. There are as many reasons not to eat animals as there are lives that could be saved by making a simple dietary change. One of the joys of being vegetarian is that my behavior is consistent with my values. And though it's not a perfect world and I'm not a perfect person, it feels pretty good knowing that my personal choices reflect nonviolence and compassion, kindness and simplicity and healthfulness. Adopting a vegetarian lifestyle is the best choice that I've ever made, and I've never had to offer any excuses for it. Thanks for listening, and take care. 